it's probably misleading to call Washington a swamp because, well, most of it doesn't look like one. You can really see the crown molding when you get to the top. There are lots of expensive homes here. Beautiful gourmet kitchen, culinary delight. All glass walls, ceiling, skylit. This home is a steal at $2.8 million. Today, for the first time, most of the richest counties in America surround Washington, D.C. Few people know more about how they got so rich than Peter Schweitzer. He's the author of Clinton Cash, the book that exposed many of the Clinton Foundation's sleazy dealings. So, Peter, I kind of feel sorry for you. Your, your book was going to be big for four years, and now <laughs> she's not elected. Nobody cares anymore. No, people care. <laughs> they do, and Washington, D.C. is a target-rich environment as far as exposing cronyism and corruption. It's a never-ending source, unfortunately, of those kinds of stories and that kind of information. Well, then let's show some more pictures that show how much money is sloshing around the Washington swamp. Washington, once a sleepy, part-time home for politicians, now resembles Versailles. Power brokers work in buildings that look like palaces. And after work, they go home to castles. It all helps one understand why people spend millions to win jobs here. And then... Once people come to D.C., they never leave. That was the realtor selling them houses. And why should they leave when they can make so much money off of us? Peter, it, it didn't used to be this way when Washington was smaller. Uh, Washington, D.C. has changed. It's, it's become a, a place of wealth creation, wealth creation off of government, not that they're producing a whole lot. But you also see a lot of corporations and companies now, John, that are locating there uh, because they see the advantage of being close to the seat of power and getting favors from uh, the federal government. So it's a very rich city, now the wealthiest city in the United States, which to me is very troubling. President-elect Trump says he will not allow his staff to lobby for five years after they leave the executive branch, and he'll propose a five-year ban on lobbying by former members of Congress and their staffs. Well, you know, I think it's a great start. He has pledged to drain the swamp. The problem is it's a pledge. They're basically making a promise. And in Washington, D.C., unfortunately, a lot of promises get broken all the time. So it has, at this point, no force of law, which is, I think, what it needs to have. After writing Clinton Cash, you came up with your own reform plan, and I'll just run through it quickly here. One, a lifetime ban on lobbying for members of Congress and their families. Two, ban congressmen from taking any donations from defense contractors and lobbying firms. Three, no campaign contributions while Congress is in session. And this sounds good, but I'm skeptical and I wonder how fair is that? Because as government has grown and grown more evil in many ways, I, you're right to talk back if you're a company and say, please don't put us out of business, this law will kill us kind of depends on having access to Congress. Yeah, I mean, look, the ultimate solution to cronyism is to shrink the size and scope of government. But, you know, hopefully that will happen someday. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. If you talk to most corporations, not all, but most corporations in Silicon Valley and elsewhere, they would rather not have to hire lobbyists. They would rather not have to make campaign contributions. They feel like they need to, in a sense, because it's, it's more like extortion than it is bribery politicians are creating a demand for their services by creating laws or circumstances that in a sense force corporations to make campaign contributions and hire lobbyists. So my reform is not a silver bullet. It doesn't fix everything, but I think it would disrupt this influence marketplace in Washington, D.C. and change the dynamics in a positive way. I suspect when government's that big, people would slime around it. You say ban family members. Well, people would get divorced just so they could go, <laughs> go, back, go back to lobbying. You pointed out there's something called tax extenders. It's a good example of how the system works. A great example is the tax deduction or tax credits that corporations get for investing in research and development. This is a good thing. It encourages innovation by American corporations. It's been on the books since the Reagan administration. 
but it gets re-upped every couple of years. Why? Why is it not permanent? Why has Congress not made it permanent? If they made it permanent, they would not have a reason to get major corporations to give them money every time it's up for renewal. So it's kind of a hostage situation. We're going to extend it for a couple of years, but two years from now, we're going to come back to you asking for donations, so we will pass this again for another two years, and we can redo it all again. That's the kind of craziness that you get with this kind of business model of crony capitalism by politicians. And so people pour more money into the swamp. Thank you, Peter Schweitzer.